what about the time with the dinosaur? Oh, that's the one. one. Nice one, Joy. Is it really a unanimous decision to follow Joy? Or does Joy want the other emotions to think that they came up with the idea? Hello, Lost Boys and Lost Girls. Welcome to the Second Star Channel, the only channel on YouTube that combines the wonders of Disney with the artistic styles of jazz music. For the past three weeks, I have been trying to create a theory video about the Pixar film Inside Out, but it felt like every idea I came up with had already been done. Do emotions have emotions? <coughs> Is Bing Bong a lost emotion? <coughs> Even how does Inside Out fit in the Pixar theory? <coughs> I almost gave up on this video entirely till I watched it for the seventh time and it hit me. Who controls Riley's emotions. Without further ado, here we go. Just as a refresher, Inside Out was released in 2015. Riley, an 11-year-old girl, moving from Minnesota to San Francisco with her family. Riley, like everybody else in the world, has her decisions controlled by her five primary emotions. Joy, sadness, fear, disgust, and anger. Everything works out well in Riley's head until her first day of school in San Francisco. When Riley is called upon to tell the class a little bit about herself, the emotions fumble to take control. After sadness touches a happy memory and makes it sad, a new core memory is formed. But unlike the other core memories, this one is sad. Joy, wanting to protect Riley, tries to stop the new core memory from solidifying and in doing so knocks the other core memories out. The memories are sucked into a vacuum along with joy and sadness. The movie then is broken to two settings, joy and sadness trying to find a way back to headquarters while fear, disgust, and anger fail to make Riley live a normal life. All caught up? Good. For most of the movie, we see each of the emotions at the control panel, but joy is usually the leader. All of Riley's core emotions are happy, so that would mean by nature joy is in charge of controlling Riley's other emotions, right? Theory over, case closed. Well, it's not that simple. To answer our question, we need a brief understanding of what causes emotional reactions. For that, let's turn to psychology. Yes, I know it feels like I'm stalling, but before I can get to my theory, I need to let you all know about the psychological studies about emotion. And trust me, there is no shortage of research. However, I'm going to highlight three theories. There's the James Lang theory, the Cannon Broad theory, and the two-factor theory. James Lang theory was proposed independently by psychologist William James and psychologist Carl Lang. The James Lang theory of emotions suggests that emotions occur as a result of physiological reactions to events. The Cannon Bard theory takes a different approach. According to the Cannon Bard theory of emotion, emotions and bodily changes do not share a cause and effect relationship like the James Lang theory proposed. Rather, they occur simultaneously following a stimulating event. The Satcher Singer theory, also called the two factor theory, states that emotion is based off on two factors physiological arousal and cognitive label. A little confused? Well, luckily for us, Inside Out provides us with an example of each of these theories in the movie. The James Lang theory is best depicted by Joy. After falling from the side of the cliff with Bing Bong, Joy is surrounded by nearly forgotten memories. She holds a memory in her hands and cries. The cause in this situation is Joy seeing the memories, and the effect is her crying. Joy is saddened by the memories, an emotion that she wouldn't usually feel unless she was in such a sad situation. The Ken and Bard theory is best depicted by the change in Riley's memories every time sadness touches them. A lot of Anger's reactions also follow this theory, as his flames grow when his temper starts to build up. We'll come back to this theory in a little bit. The two-factor theory is the theory mostly depicted in this movie. It's the most obvious because the emotions are commenting on the actions of Riley. For example, when Riley begins to choke up at school, Fear exclaims, We're crying at school! 
which causes Riley to cry even more. All of these theories underline another cause. Should we be asking what controls Riley's emotions instead of who? Well, not necessarily. The film makes it pretty clear that the emotions are the ones in charge, reacting to their environment as see best fit. The emotions themselves don't have emotions because they are all part of Riley. Sure, there are certain times when they refer to Riley as a parent might refer to their child, but they are the driving force of Riley's behavior and decisions. The emotions, however, can express different forms of emotion, not because they possess other emotions, but because they are being influenced by emotions around them. Let me explain. Like in any group setting, decisions are influenced by the thoughts of others. This is similar to how Riley's emotions work. Ken and Bart theory is the closest to what is depicted in the relationship between the emotions. When Joy creates the first idea in the film, the imagining of Riley's new bedroom, everyone happily participates. We even see the other's emotions smiling. Or how about when Fear exclaims how bad of an idea it is for Riley to run away from home. Anger and disgust begin to panic, realizing the horrible mistake. Panic is a form of fear. The emotions that take charge intentionally and unintentionally are controlling not only Riley's decisions, but they are forcing the other emotions to comply to their thought process. This can be through a verbal exchange. You sure we want to do this? In we go! Okay, going in, yes! But it can also be through the emptiness of emotion. Towards the beginning of the movie, Joy is sat in after looking at how bad of a day Riley had. But right before she is left alone at the control panel, sadness touches her. Fear's influence, because of his touch, causes sadness to panic the entire way back. At the end of the movie, after Joy lets sadness take over the control panel, she puts her hands on top of sadness' hands, making sadness smile and causing the first dual emotion core memory. I don't know about you lost folks, but I don't usually associate smiling with sadness. The emotions are in control of one another, either by exclaiming a highly emotional statement or by simply touching one another. At the end of the film, we see the five emotions working together to make Riley perform the best in hockey. Just like the movie depicts, emotions are complicated, and it's perfectly normal to feel as if you are experiencing multiple emotions at once. Inside Out is an animation masterpiece that will have a legacy much longer than several of Pixar's films. This is of course had to be the first property that I created a theory around, and with that, I think it's safe to say that this theory has been Disney-fied. And there you have it lost folks, hopefully you enjoyed this in-depth history on Disney Pixar film Inside Out. What other Disney properties should I write theories about? Let me know in the comments section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, stay in the loop and be informed in all history and fun facts of Disney, and make sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, keep on flying second star to the right, and straight on till morning.